just a pleasure to be here with Kevin Yoder. Thank you for joining us on this interview, Kevin. Um, you're an interesting guy. You know, you have a background in computer science, and then from there you went into dentistry. How did that come about? Oh, it's a, it's a good question. But um, first off, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me involved in this. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to be here. Um, so yeah, it is kind of um, an interesting history there. But uh, to be quite honest, it was just that I've always been involved in computers. I've loved computers since as early as I can remember. And kind of my whole goal uh, was to be in the, the field of computer science. And uh, up until I think right before I was graduating um, my undergraduate uh, degree, I had a computer science degree all lined up and everything, and I actually did get that. Um, but I was kind of worried about the landscape at that time, and that was, geez, now 10, over 10 years ago. Um, I was kind of wondering about the landscape of the whole tech field in general, and I wasn't just sure if I was going to have a, a good, solid you know, consistently long lasting career in something there. So um, my dad was a dentist. I've known that also my whole life, just because of that, I've been around it. Um, and kind of ironically enough, a lot of the same classes and prereqs kind of line up for computer science and, and dentistry. So I just had to take a few more and um, I was able to get into dental school and I made that decision to go that way because I thought it would be a more, um, a more, yeah, I guess just consistent um, profession, you know, for, for the rest of my life, a career choice. And uh, as it turns out, it's been, like I said, a very wonderful thing. Um, I love working with patients and uh, I'm so happy, so happy I made the decision to go that route versus kind of just sitting in a, in a cubicle or something like that. Uh, the interaction with patients and, you know, love them is a wonderful thing. What about you is you're you know, you're no ordinary computer scientist, and then you're no ordinary dentist. <laughs> I, I sort of see you, you know, as this quintessential dentist who used to make his own tools, make his own devices for patients, but just in this, this new era of technology and 3D printing, how do you use 3D printing in your practice at this time? Yeah, so um, it's, you get to a certain point um, with 3D printing and, and using the software to uh, make the things that you can 3D print. And, and I'm, I feel like I'm not exaggerating, exaggerating when I say like the possibilities are, are limitless. Um, so right now, but, but at the same time, as far as like what you can do with patients, um, there is a very set limit at this time. I mean, you can only use biocompatible resins, uh, certain machines that print with those, there's an FDA kind of process. So um, for that, it's limited. And I do, but I do use that a lot. Um, some of the things I like to do often are, uh, pr I print a ton of models out um, for uh, Essex trays, you know, bleach trays, things like that. Um, a ton of custom trays for removable uh, dentistry, um, like partial denture, bleed denture, that type of thing. Um, it's made that workflow a whole lot easier. Um, and uh, yeah, so as far as, and then temporary crowns, that's another big one. It's, it's, uh, it's really easy for that. Um, but you can also get a little bit more creative too. So um, one of the things that I noticed right away is that there's this resin called uh, indirect bonding tray. It's like a flexible type resin. Uh, you can make like little matrices that then you can uh, make provisionals or inject composite uh, clinically. And it's, it's a wonderful thing and it works really, really well. Um, so things like that are a little outside of the box um, clinically, but it works really well in, in that regard. Um, but then even further, uh, you know, you can even forget the biocompatible, forget all of that stuff, just with the standard resins that exist. Um, all the different pieces and parts in your office, just think of all the small plastic pieces, the rheostat switches, the HVE handles, all those things that actually never touch the patient's mouth, those are so easy to print out and they're actually kind of expensive when you have to buy them over and over again. Um, so things like that are really easy to kind of design or scan in yourself and just get your own stock going so you can save money that way too. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just so glad that you're going to be at our now virtual 3D Heels 2020 as we're in this new normal of COVID-19. I think you're a voice that um, that dentists need to hear as they enter 3D printing as well as the larger 3D printing healthcare community. 
thank you for your time today. Absolutely. No problem. I look forward to seeing you virtually. Thank you so much.